Bitch, die. Oh, no, bitch. Die, bitch. Hold on, y'all. 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 Hold on, y'all.
Okay, lastly, you will have this, the exact the zip code file to access all the documents within. I hope this helps you. Need any more information from us, please let me know. Sincerely, we'll leave it alone. Okay, I want to see the uh, document, please. Can you please put the document up there? Peace and love to everybody coming out, joining the chat. So I, I, cause I want them to see the name um, of this motherfucking con artist, uh, NWA. I don't know if a lot of people know. Um, he mock is his name. They ain't played a video this morning with he mock on his trying to denounce he mock like he didn't really know. First thing he said is he mock has had many names. How you know that he mock didn't have many motherfucking names, nigga? If you don't know he might be trying to make like you didn't know how to pronounce his motherfucking name. Nigga, now you think we motherfucking slow. You know exactly his name because his name been ringing around this motherfucker forever. He been, he came here and was in American or uh, Indian uh, community uh, selling packages trying to uh, get your nationality in AAIP packages and you're claiming that you don't know him but yet this right here is on your website. This is the package. The link leads you to this right here on your website. Nigga, don't shut down your website because this is what we got it from. Because the person purchased it. They purchased from your website. Got receipts, nigga. So if you try to take it down, we got receipts. We got receipts. We got screenshots of where they purchased it from. So, nigga, you can't take it motherfucking down. If, even if you do, you already been out it. Bitch ass nigga. So on the NAA IP site, on, on his site, and he's selling his package from a person that he claimed on his video this morning that he did not know when the dude, when they were saying the dude was driving the van with uh Choctaw Nation and saying he was more people know Choctaw and more is two different things. Those are two different fucking people. Moors are a set of people and the Choctaw are a set of people. So, you claim this morning that you didn't know you could kept trying to mispronounce his name and all kind of shit. And that he uh, and he has had uh, different names and shit. That's what you said, nigga. And exactly what you said. How you know he done had different fucking names, nigga? Because according to you, you didn't know him. So how you know he got different names? So... Can you make that bigger for me, uh, my assistant? Can you please make that big enough so we can he see the name? Okay, there you go, right there. He mock. Push, pull it over something. I can't, can't. Get. Yeah, this, this is on your site. And does y'all see? The proof right there says he mock. I don't care if you try to delete it, niggas already been screenshot on the purchase, the people that purchased the package from your site, Conway. Mr. Conway himself, aka motherfucking con artist, him motherfucking self. It says he mock. If you didn't know who he was, nigga, why you got his motherfucking paperwork on your motherfucking website? On your shit, nigga. Nigga, but that ain't it, so you can't say that ain't his shit. Oh, can I please get the video? We finna, this is for educational, for entertainment and educational purposes to tie the NAA that's on your boy's Conway's fucking page, his motherfucking website that the, he's selling uh, packages. Not only has several people had came forth without him selling the package, several people have came forth with this. He denied it. He denied it that day when he was on the motherfucking panel with Bones them when they outed his ass with that lady. He denied it on, on Betsy's channel. He denied it. Just like you said, Betsy, that you're Dane's friend, you love Dane. These are my sisters and I love my sisters. And I also seen what Mental Intellect said on, uh, on App, uh, what's it, American True Channel, something about $500. We ain't never collected $500 or nothing from nobody. Nobody. So quit motherfucking lying, nigga. 
But I got you. Can you please play the video for me? Sick of y'all niggas. Y'all get y'all got all this energy for the motherfucking matriarchs. Y'all a prime example of this motherfucking estrogen was putting our people's mother and our motherfucking baby milk formula that they were selling. Cause you niggas act like some bitches. Straight up and down bitches. You see the one with there it go right there. There it go. Right there. Since he said he don't know, but this is what he said it on his website. For entertainment purposes, education on you soon. of America and one of the, I am one of the original chartered members. Akwini, Nito, Nito Park, that is peace be unto you, friends. Nisu Wishiwanag was translated from Nahigansid into English as two hawks. I am Director General for the Federation and Pamiham Satan of the Mashipag Nahigansid tribe, which is also one of the chartering members of the Federation. Chief Nikat Namatsukwa, I am the Chief Development Officer for FANA and also Chief of the Matsupak Kiskiyak. I'm Ronnie Deer, and I'm on the Royal Council of Seven for the Polk no Kit Tribe, Polk no Kit Nation. So, in respect to uh, what is FANA, I think it would make sense to give a kind of crash course in terms of what is FANA and what it does mm -hmm. to then understand um, anything else coming from FANA. So whoever would like to take that. Uh, so what FANA is, it's a tribally trust chartered institution, which is a confederation of American Aboriginal tribes and nation that have been able to document their existence prior to U.S. colonization on their soils. Uh, FANA consists of about 7,000 tribal members up and down the East Coast and into Puerto Rico. And uh, the chartering members, of course, are the Poconocet Nation, of which the Sagamore and the Superior Chief here is the chief of that nation, the Meshipag Narragansett tribe, and the Sand Hill Band of Lenape and Cherokee Indians out of New York, New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Uh, FANA was trust chartered so that tribal nations who are operating in the capacity that we all are, which is through tribal trust charter established according to international paid trust treaty standards, could come together to work to develop policies, procedures, and then implement them that would be beneficial for our people. One of the main issues is that most times the only way that nations are able to gain any sort of recognition or acknowledgement is through a federal recognition process. But in the process of doing that, to simplify it all, what happens is the federal government creates a tribal trust and then inserts the U.S. Congress as the caretakers of the trust. So that's why you often hear of federal trust lands. FANA has elected to not go that route because we don't feel that given our heritage and our bloodlines, we should be in any sort of recognition with any colonial entity. We were here before the U.S. got here. Why would we put ourselves into a position of subjugation underneath them now? Simultaneously, FANA has not rescinded any sort of U.S. citizenship, but rather reclassified ourselves to our proper status as American Aborigine. And an Aborigine, if you look at the legal definition, is of the original people. A lot of people looking at it just with normal terminology would think that it means not normal. But of course, we know legal terminology and common language terminology are often uh, conflict future for our tribal members and citizens. Association mm -hmm. uh, and indirect association, and I think it needs to uh, be addressed. So um, uh, who or what is NAIP and how did uh, FANA ever have any... Um, connection or dealings with them because that's a question that's on the people's minds absolutely yeah so the NAAIP is the national association for the advancement of indigenous people it's an institution that was started by an individual by the name of Himak Shil. originally i found out about NAAIP in 2014 uh via facebook you know very active on facebook and saw this gentleman 
talking about issues of misclassification for dark skinned Aborigine. As we looked more into his background and what he was talking about, the legal edicts and, and, and uh, principles that he was talking about definitely met up to research standards. He was speaking specifically about the Racial Integrity Act of 1924 and how it had misclassified a lot of Indians to the uh, classification of colored. And this resonated with me in particular because my fourth great grandfather, Chief Brister Michael of the Narragansett Indian tribe was chief of the tribe in 1881 when the state of Rhode Island illegally detribalized them. And my grandmother, rest in peace, before she passed, had done a lot of research on our historical lineage. And she was able to come across a copy of his death certificate. And lo and behold, on the death certificate, he was listed as colored. So if they can do that to the chief of a tribe who's documented by the state in the 1881 commission's report on an Indian affairs, they can do that to any tribal member. So when he was speaking of these things, he was also speaking of the United Nations Declaration on the right to self-determination. All of these elements were adding up. So I ended up reaching out to the gentleman on uh, Facebook and I said to him, hey, look, don't know too much about you, don't know too much about your institution, but you're saying that you can help. This is who my people are. And of course, once again, pre-colonial, if I could share the uh, Sagamore and the superior chief's lineage, he is the 10th generation grandson of the Massasoit Osamequin. Massasoit means great leader. Osamequin means yellow feather of the Poconoke tribe of the Poconoke nation. You would know the Massasoit from being the chief that greeted the pilgrims and saved them, being the chief that had the first Thanksgiving with the pilgrims, being the chief that ultimately signed the first treaty with the English. And then also he's the ninth generation great grandson of Paul Medicom, who's more commonly referred to as King Philip, who was the chief that started the King Philip's war. And then he's also the sixth generation great grandson of Simeon Simons, who was George Washington's handpicked at, at a point where they kind of wiped out or attempted to wipe out the tribes. So I reached out to him and I explained this to him and he him as a consultant as we move these things forward. And that's what we did. Now, this is going into 2015 at this time. At this time, he also invited the superior chief and I to attend the United Nations with him. Uh, which was interesting for us because we had never been to the United Nations. And upon going to the United Nations, we were actually able to enter the United Nations with the NAAIP card. So, of course, this is substantiating in our eyes more of what he's saying. So we came back from there and started to speak to more of our people. A number of them were very hesitant to get involved with the institution, so they didn't. Uh, but the individuals who were involved continued to build upon the information that he had shared, and also do research amongst ourselves. Eventually, um, and this is where we kind of red flags started to go up. He- uh, now, Can I interject? That's, is sure. that about a year? How long? Yes, this is about, this is taking place over about a year's time. Now okay. in this time, I would like to also mention that he had gone back down to his place in Cherokee, North Carolina, or somewhere around there. And one day I just got a phone call from him and the man was hysterical on the phone talking about the cops had taken his children and he needed to get them back and this, that, and the other. Uh, so, you know, the brother had come up and shared some very good information. So us, you know, as Indian folk are, we were wanting to help. Um, so he ended up coming up here with a number of his children. For a while, we actually putting him up in spaces to stay because he didn't have any money. And during this time, we, uh, he was holding classes at a local community center, just educating our people around the issues of misclassification um, reclassification, mm -hmm. status and standing, international law, all things that are very, very solid in terms of the law and how they can be applied and should be understood. Um, at this point, he made a suggestion to me, FANA. And I said, well, what is FANA? He said, well, FANA is the Federation of Aborigine Nations of America. And it's very important to understand that language he used, Federation of Aborigine Nations of America, because we are the Federation of Aboriginal Nations of America. And he said that, you know, NAAIP is just for individuals, so it doesn't really have power. All it can really do is kind of help people to find out who they are. But us, with our history, was so substantial that we really should be moving in a capacity that was beyond NAAIP. And that as our consultant, he was suggesting that we not only establish fauna, but that we also reach out to the Sand Hill Band of Lenape and Cherokee Indians. So the Sagamore and I, through our research, we found out who Sand Hill was. Of course, they were pre-colonial just like we were. He facilitated some conversation between the Sagamore and Chief Yanaguska and Taliona, 
uh, well-respected chiefs from Sand Hill who had been in attendance at the United Nations for a number of years. We had ongoing dialogue and we actually collectively created a charter that the three nations came together to form to create fauna. Now, during this time period, it just kept bothering me. Uh, I was be getting ready to be an adjunct professor at, um, at Roger Williams University and the grammar thing was just on my mind. And Federation of Aborigine Nations of America just didn't seem grammatically correct. And, you know, creator works in very strange ways, but it, I, it just wouldn't leave me alone. So I said to the rest of the chiefs, you know, I really think it should be Federation of Aboriginal Nations of America. It just seems to be more grammatically correct. And the chiefs agreed with me. So instead of chartering the Federation of Aborigine Nations of America, we chartered the Federation of Aboriginal Nations of America. And that'll, that'll uh, put itself out as I discuss a little bit further. We chartered that. January of 2016. January of 2016, we charted that. The chiefs came up from uh, Sand Hill, Band of Lenape and Cherokee Indians. We first met at the uh, SAC. You know, he had gotten to a certain point in terms of his lineage, but he was certain that he was a Chachiuma member. And, you know, because of the information that he was supplying, we, we at the time had no reason to question that, particularly because of our experience here. So that's why we began to engage with him. So at this time, as we created FANA, he was still director general or national director or whatever his position was with NAAIP. He said that he would like to take on a consulting role with FANA and would like to be our executive attache. And as executive attache, he would help us with developing other protocols and procedures to assist the tribes in doing what they're doing because it was also beneficial to NAAIP to be working with tribes of our, of our that could substantiate themselves the way that we could. Um, and he was doing that for a while. You might see on his NAAIP America Facebook page some video and some pictures up from an International Indigenous Peoples Cultural Conference that we held in 2016, March of 2016, March or April, uh, where he was involved in that conference. But it was also Fauna who was one of the sponsors, as well as an organization that I was able to start, the Providence Cultural Equity Initiative. Uh, NAAIP was one of the sponsors, but it most certainly wasn't the main sponsor. He did help us in getting some individuals to be able to come and speak at the conference. So if you look at his page, what you will see is pictures of us, but all from 2016. Uh, after the conference came, it then became time to register for visits to United Nations. And being that FANA was now a separate institution from NAAIP, our interest was to register and to go as FANA. Being executive attache, he put out to the group that he would be the one to assist me in registration for the United Nations visit. And so for about a seven to eight week period, I asked him at least once a week when we were going to register for the UN. And he made it out to be this very detailed and involved process that you didn't want to get wrong. And we needed to just hold up because there was a couple of other things that were important, but that we would get to the registration. So this went on and eventually I remember asking him twice in one week saying, hey, you know, it's getting very close to the UN. We don't want to miss the registration deadline. What's going on? So finally, one day he said, okay, let's go ahead and register. And of course I went to register and lo and behold, the registration deadline had passed. So I'm saying to myself, well, this is craziness. I've been asking this man for seven, eight weeks now to register. And all of a sudden the deadline's passed and he's saying that he didn't know that the deadline was coming up. Um, so in conversation, he then suggested that NAAIP create an agreement with FANA that FANA would go in underneath them and they would represent FANA at the UN, to which I immediately replied, no, I couldn't do that. I said, a lot of my people were very wary about the NAAIP institution. They allowed us to move forward as a tribe with the other tribes because it was a separate institution from NAAIP. And that if I went back and tried to pitch this to my people, they would remove me from chief. I said, so I wasn't going to do that. I didn't think it was in my own personal interest to do that. And I didn't think any of the other tribes, or in particular, my tribal members would go for that. <laughs> and his response to me at that point was, well, I guess you got some figuring out to do. So right there, I started to look at him differently. Now, to the credit of Nikad here, Nikad had been raising red flags for a while, just about certain things that Hemak was saying. Uh, at one point, he had had a conversation with Hemak about some information that he found. And then when we had our FANA meeting, which we were doing on a weekly basis, Hemak presented that information as if he found it. So I was having these conversations with Nikon at the time. 
but I was still willing to give him the benefit of the doubt up until the point where um, this situation happened with Fauna. Now, in the meantime, the Sagamore just pointed out we had engaged with the Rhode Island Department of Health, uh, been talking to them about reclassification, about how they were missing our population in the state. We had gone around and met with uh, representatives from the state police. Uh, prior to that, we had met with representatives from the governor's office and attorney general's office. So we were going around doing our due diligence of letting everyone know who we were. And of course, all of these state institutions knowing us, not only from our work as Aboriginal nations, but just from being good community members and active in the community, you know, they were fully understanding and respecting the, the process and the manner that we were moving in. And this is where I guess he started to see the potential and started to get a little greedy. So we ended up deciding um, that, you know what, since certain of us were indeed NAAIP members, uh, we would go as individual NAAIP members and use our NAAIP cards to gain access. But that once we got there, we would be presenting ourselves as representatives of FANA. And in conversation with Sand Hill, Band of Lenape and Cherokee Indians, they said that that was a common practice at the UN that organizations that weren't able to get in would often go under other organizations and then be able to speak on behalf of their organization when they got there. And of course, San Diego had been going there for years. So we collectively decided that that's how we would move, but it was understood that we were going as FANA representatives. We created our own UN statement, which we read it. Well, we didn't get a chance to read, but we submitted it to the UN and we also posted it on the internet for people to view. You can check that out. Um, if you go to our FANA script page, you can see what our UN declaration was. Ultimately, we didn't get the chance. We weren't allowed the opportunity to speak there. But I come to find out after that the, one of the reasons we didn't get the chance is because the UN told uh, HEMOC that, well, only one organization could speak at the UN since we came under NAAIP. And he went and told them, well, that it would be NAAIP. So it was NAAIP. Uh, this was never conveyed to me at the time, but it ended up being NAAIP. He ended up going back a few weeks later with the Sagamore, uh, stating that he was going to support Fonda's opportunity to speak there. Some of you may have seen that on the internet as well, where he's speaking, talking about the treaty with the English is rescinded and all of that sort of stuff. And this is all during our time, uh, once again, leading up to and going to the UN. Now, while at the UN, come to find out that he had told other chiefs that I was going to be paying for their accommodations there. He had also spread a room. I had gotten a fellowship from the Rhode Island Foundation to do cultural work with the Providence Cultural Equity Initiative, that I was supposed to give him $30,000 of my fellowship for him to do the work that he was doing, when in actuality, I had told him, I'll give you $3,000 to serve as a consultant for the year. And then hopefully, as things continue, there'll be some more dollars. But given my budget, that's what I can afford. And that conversation was had right in front of NECA. So he had begun after the situation where I said that no FANA wouldn't go under NAAIP or sign that agreement with him to try to discredit me amongst the other chiefs that were involved with FANA. Uh, fortunately, the chiefs are, are chiefs of integrity and they know of the good work that I have been doing. So they weren't feeding into it and were making me aware of these things. Greetings, so, loves. How's everyone doing today? <sighs> I want to take a random poll. Okay, not so random. I want to ask a question. I would like to know how many people have gotten a package from Mr. Dane Calloway? How many have gotten a p -p -p package from Mr. Dane Calloway? Gotten a package from Mr. Dane Calloway and uh, it, it just didn't seem right. It may have been uh, kind of all over the place incomplete or conflicting with the information on his videos maybe it had applications that you didn't expect like an application to the more science bowl of america or the naaip and you're kind of stuck asking yourself why would it have an application to the more science temple of america and naaip when we know that uh Mr. Callaway does videos very much uh, telling you that the more science temple of America is kind of not something you want to be involved in. And you can't really be indigenous and be a more no kid. Uh, not really. Um, but if you don't know why 
an application to the NAAIP might not be a good idea. I'll just go ahead and link a video to that below. But if you got an application, I'm sorry, if you got a pull up a package from Dane Calloway, and that package just wasn't quite what you expected, and uh, maybe you was told he was hacked. I don't know, but. It wasn't quite corrected, and um, you're trying to figure out uh, what's going on, and you're not getting uh, contacted back. It's not getting straightened out, and it just doesn't seem like uh, what's being given in the videos. Leave your comments below. I just want to take a poll, take a survey. Just a poll, just a survey, and check out the video that I'm going to link below so you can see um, what's being said about the NAAIP as to why uh, getting an application to them shouldn't be something you should expect in the p -p 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 package. Alright, thank you for your participation. You guys enjoy your day.